Welcome back, pre-calculus to 2.4, dealing with dividing polynomials using the remainder and factor theorems. The main example that's going to be covered in this video is just going to be using long division for polynomials, but in the other video you'll see synthetic division, you'll see the remainder theorem, and a little bit more. So the reason that we want to divide polynomials is because we've been working with division forever and really math is also amplified for you in the sense that you've gone from working with just x terms to x squared and x cubed. So it only makes sense to have polynomials being divided by some factor potentially. So how this is going to work. We're going to take the top term in our numerator this polynomial seen here, usually the bigger one, we're then going to follow back pretty much to how you've worked with long division in the past. So if you had something like 10 over 2, if you think about way back when when you were solving this, you took the top number, you put it in this little house of sorts, and then you started to use 2 on the side, and then you started thinking out, all right, well, what times 2 gets us close to 10? And you might say, something like 4, 2 times 4 would get you 8, you then deduct 8, you get this, then you realize, oh, I need to add a little bit more, so then you say, all right, well, one more, you then deduct 2, you see your remainder 0, and then your answer would be this, this 1 plus 4. So we kind of do the same thing here, where we're kind of comparing all of this. We're thinking about what we have in our denominator, this x plus 2, and then we're trying to compare it to what's inside under this bracket. We're then trying to compare what's missing, so thinking what times this term here, in this case x plus 2, or what times x, would get us this first term of x cubed. So in this case it would have to be x squared, we then distribute x squared to x into 2, we deduct everything, that then gets us to the next step where we're thinking now, what times x would get us negative 4x squared? It would be negative 4x, you then distribute negative 4x to x and 2, you subtract everything, take it further, keep going until you get ideally and hopefully a remainder of 0. Where eventually you want to say that your answer is this x squared minus x plus 5. That's usually the goal. So we'll do the same thing here. So in our denominator, we have 3x cubed minus 2. I'm going to write that outside of this little bracket. Inside here, I'm going to write my numerator polynomial, which in this case is going to be 9x to the fourth minus 4x squared minus 6x. And so I'm thinking out how I can go from multiplying 3x cubed to 9x to the fourth. Well, I know that 3 needs to go to 9, so the only way that's going to happen is if this is a 3. I know that I need to add an exponent, go from 3 to 4, so this needs to be 3x. And so I can double check my work on the side. I know that if I have 3x cubed multiplying with 3x, 3 times 3 gets me 9, x cubed times x gets me x to the fourth. So this is good to go. What this means is that I can now multiply 3x with this polyno polynomial here. So this is going to get me 9x to the fourth. Negative 2 times 3x gets you negative 6x, but you're going to want to write that down here. So ideally you'll notice that some terms are going to be missing and you want to rewrite them so that they fall in line accordingly to where you need them. So we have negative 2 times 3x getting us negative 6x, and it's really important to notice that we're always subtracting whatever term this might be. So although we haven't talked about 4x squared, we'll see that might come up in a bit. But for now, we'll just focus on combining what we can. So when we have 9x to the 4th and we deduct 9x to the 4th, we see that this cancels. So that's good. There's nothing to really write there. We have negative 6x and we're subtracting negative 6x. So this is adding on. So this actually cancels and gets us 0, 0. So the only thing we can really do here is bring down negative 4x squared. 
and that's it. So this is really just it. And then you might be stuck because you're thinking, well, I had 3x just here, and now I'm being asked to find what term when multiplied with 3x cubed gets us negative 4x squared. Well, we can't necessarily go down at all as far as an exponent goes, so we're actually done. It's kind of a weird phenomenon, but this is a good rule of thumb is that if you can't bring down or multiply this term with anything to get what's left over here, you're done. So we would be able to say that this is our remainder, and our main answer would be 3x, but this is with the remainder of negative 4x squared. So believe it or not, this is actually it. This would be the done, completed version. But I'll give you a moment to try this next one. So think out with this one. I'll give you a moment to give this one a shot. Well, you could have x plus 1 on the left. Inside, under here, you have x squared plus 2x plus 1. You're thinking what term when multiplied with x will get x squared. So hopefully you're saying x. x is ideal here. So let's hit in x. x times x plus 1 would get you x squared. And you're also going to add on an x term. Keeping in mind that you're subtracting all of this. X, cubed, or sorry, x squared minus x squared gets you 0. 2x minus x gets you just positive x. 1's going to come down for the ride. And so now you're thinking what term when multiplied with x will get you x, which is just 1. So plus 1. 1 times x plus 1 is just x plus 1. You see a little bit of an interesting phenomenon here where these are all going to cancel. If you look at this closely, x minus x gets you 0, 1 minus 1 gets you 0, so we luckily have a remainder of nothing. So for this one, there's actually no remainder. And the final thing that we would want to say is our answer is x plus 1, which we got from here. So there's no remainder on this, it's kind of the normal occurrence. The example that I showed here was just a random one. This doesn't always happen, so be open to rewriting terms, subtracting, and we'll see in the next video that there's an easier way to do this, potentially.